Today we're addressing the elephant in the room and answering the question that is on everybody's mind. Can you still make it in crypto in 2022? Or better yet, can you make any money at all? Well, obviously the past few weeks have shown us that yes, you can still make a pretty penny here in crypto as the charts have seemingly erupted out of nowhere. Again, if you're following my Twitter content, I tend to put a lot of stock into the emotional tone, the sentiment of the market that usually in indicates whether the market is too greedy or too fearful for whatever moment we're in. And don't get me wrong, this is one absolutely insane situation that we find ourselves in with macroeconomics, Fed policy, global geopolitical tension, the unwinding of an up only monetary policy and more. I put out a video called Insanity a few weeks ago that accurately summed up my feelings, which is that it's really hard to predict every single move. So let's go through everything going on with crypto and at the end of the episode, I'll give you my conclusion as to whether I believe it's still possible to make it here in crypto land here in 2022. So if you're excited, smash that like button, obliterate it, destroy it. Let's get some excitement going here back in the cryptocurrency industry because God knows the charts are looking very, very spicy. So first and foremost, let's talk about the tech sector, which pretty much governs cryptocurrency. When the Fed announced that it was going to be raising interest rates and tightening the monetary policy, the free money market that had stimulated these wild, wild gains ever since the beginning of the pandemic in 2020, what we saw was effectively crypto and the mainstream tech market, the NASDAQ, which is displayed on the bottom here, we can see that over the recent periods, the Ethereum market, which kind of embodies the innovative part of cryptocurrency, the technological new stuff that's fun and innovative, the new internet, if you will, it trades very, very similar to tech stocks. However, we did say that Ethereum clearly responded better here and put in a more clear bottom here than tech did. However, what we're seeing is a pretty wild return here in the NASDAQ. What we know is that Ethereum and tech stocks are trading fairly similarly, and there's nothing that says that stocks can't go up while Fed is raising interest rates. In fact, 0.25% interest rates is a measly nothing burger and generally considered a stimulus environment, not a normal environment if we're going back before this whole crazy pandemic thing happened. So understanding that maybe there was an overreaction, an emotional overreaction that happened due to the fact that we had one of the biggest bubbles ever in both tech and cryptocurrency, and that people were just worried, maybe oversold, and so now it's reaching more of a period of normalcy. Again, the fear of the Fed is not as crazy as it was, but it's worth noting that the Fed real changes that are planned for later this year don't kick in until about June. So we'll need to see what happens in June when these real bigger measures start kicking in and see what happens with cryptocurrency. It's important to know that while we've become maybe more emotionally numb to what the Fed might be doing, there are real consequences to what happens with the Fed actions. So we'll have to wait and see. Again, this is going to factor into my plan for how I plan to manage my funds and my own portfolio throughout 2022. And as Steve Henrik accurately said here, panic buying now in tech. Again, no market just goes one way or the other. Everybody calling for doom and gloom. And I hate to clout chase here, but if you know my Twitter, I was getting digital tomatoes thrown at me for saying that I was bullish and that I thought the markets were due for a pump. People didn't want to believe that a rally was possible because they had become so cozy thinking that the market would just go down for a period of years. Well, that's not how markets work. And whenever the market gets so euphorically bearish, well, it's time to punish them. And that's exactly what's happened. We've also had several bullish factors here. War de-escalation hopes, Fed liquidity not reduced yet. The sentiment was at rock bottom, which is what we just talked about. Much less a long leverage. Again, long leverage is no bueno because then you could get long squeezes, which are to the downside. And of course, now we have Doquan, our hero that we don't deserve, but the one that we need. And Michael Saylor buying an F ton of BTC. The Ethereum merge is coming up. We did a video on that just a few days ago. And of course, this is one of the biggest changes to one of the biggest protocols in the history of crypto. There's a lot of bullishness, a lot of fundamentals here, and there's a lot of newly instilled confidence in a market that desperately needed some. But more important, liquidity conditions, aka free money for assets, shown in the blue line here, pay attention to the blue line, have not meaningfully deteriorated yet despite the hawkish talk by the Fed. They have yet to start meaningfully reducing their balance sheet, which we expect to start in May and June. Thus, the current move is basically a reversion back to this neutral level. 
As you can see, the stock market as depicted in the red line here has almost mimicked the total liquidity growth across pretty much all the money in the market. The more money, the more growth in the stock market. But as you can see, the tough talk out of the Fed created this emotional collapse out of the stock market. We're totally detached from net liquidity. So what we're seeing here is actually a bounce back towards that blue line. These red and blue lines like to be together. The question is what happens when the blue line meaningfully goes down? That's something we haven't seen yet and that's something we have to prepare for. So understand this as we formulate our opinions here about crypto in 2022. We also have Ms. Yor, Walter Bloomberg, saying that Russia's Medinsky is making two steps to de-escalate in the Ukraine. I really don't know what's going on here. There's been a lot of talk on both sides, but there was always the prediction that this conflict in the Ukraine would somehow resolve itself in a way that wasn't WW3. Nope. Absolutely nobody wants a nuclear war. Nobody. It's not good for business. It's not good for the country. It's not good for anyone. It's not good for your health. So what this was always about is about money. And now what's very, very interesting about this conflict in Ukraine is that it started to be about money itself, specifically the U.S. dollar. Now, in discussing money itself, an article came out a couple of weeks ago by Arthur Hayes. Arthur Hayes was an early Bitcoiner, created an exchange called BitMEX. He definitely had some interesting history, has been in his fair share of legal troubles, but he's a prolific writer and presents some very interesting ideas here about the shift in global money and how it's going to be treated as a result of some of the United States' actions in response to the conflict in the Ukraine. Now, one of the things that he brings up here is the concept of inside money and outside money. So in this particular case, inside money would be something kind of like fiat currency. Outside money are things that are not controlled by permission systems like gold and Bitcoin. Now, Arthur Hayes makes the case here that the current petrodollar, euro dollar monetary system ended and last week. This was, of course, a few weeks ago with the confiscation of the Russian central bank fiat currency reserves by the U.S. and EU and the removal of certain Russian banks from the SWIFT network. Now, he also brings up the concept here of Bretton Woods 3, where we go from a global monetary system backed from gold bullion, which was, of course, the OG backing for all monetary instruments globally for thousands of years, to Bretton Woods 2, which was backed by inside money, treasuries with unhedgeable confiscation risks, and Bretton Woods 3, which is where we transition back to outside money because the trust factor is no longer there. Again, the problem with fiat currencies is they're based on trust in governments and humans who invariably squander that trust. And so what we're looking at now is a transition away from a trust system to a trustless system. That might ring some bells for whoever might have been in the blockchain industry for quite some time now. Now, as he pontificates here, after this war is over, money will never be the same, and Bitcoin, if it still exists then, will probably benefit from all of this. Of course, right after this article came out, we did see article after article about Russia contemplating taking Bitcoin in exchange for distributing its oil across the world. Very interesting and very quick to jump to digital currencies. We also saw key government officials pointing to this conflict accelerating the adoption of digital currencies, something I definitely agree with. So while enraging bull markets, crypto trades like a tech stock, in times of uncertainty, crypto can certainly be a hedge and present an alternative financial system. It's not just one thing, crypto. It's an entirely new network of innovation that holds promises to add value in various different global climates. We also had Vladimir Putin come out and confirm what Arthur Hayes was talking about, saying effectively this seizure of Russian assets was theft and that in response they will be trading their oil in rubles. But of course we know that not everybody will want to trade in rubles and there very well might be another option like a Bitcoin thrown out in the not too distant future. Несколько недель, как вы знаете, рядом западных стран были приняты нелегитимные решения по так называемой заморозке российских активов. И вот этот коллективный Запад фактически подвел черту под надежностью. So he immediately goes to this seizure, undermining the value of the currency, because if you hold the currency, the thought is that it's a trust in the value of that currency, and that if you seize it at will, it effectively becomes a permission system, not a permissionless system. Very, very important here. своих валют мною принято решение в самое короткое время реализовать комплекс мер по переводу оплаты. Начнем с этого с нашего природного газа, переводу оплаты нашего природного газа, поставляемого в так называемые недружественные страны за 
And so as you can see, he immediately shifts to wanting to sell currencies in the ruble. And I don't know if I cut him off there. I, ha I don't have my headphones on. But the reality is, is that Vlad here is immediately jumping to the conclusion that Arthur Hayes had, which is that this move by the United States undermines the trust in the U.S. dollar for less friendly countries. We all know who those are, Russia, China. Those are the countries that are also some of the biggest trade partners. And their lack of trust in the dollar is very, very significant here. But I also want to be clear that as quick as we could be to say, okay, well, we're just going to shift to Bitcoin now. Bitcoin's the new thing. Everything's going to be backed by Bitcoin. The reality is that this romanticization of the death of the dollar is not exactly the only thing that crypto accomplishes. In fact, crypto is very bullish for the dollar in many ways. Almost everything, every single stablecoin globally is pegged to the dollar. We have USDT, USDP, USDC, UST. They're all pegged to the dollar. Everyone wants dollars. They just want digital versions that are easier to manage and trade against. So I also agree with this take by Ryan Watkins, because this isn't so black and white as it might seem. What's the best counter thesis to the, the US is in its twilight and the dollar is in a state of perpetual decline? Crypto Twitter often feels like a bubble on this topic with overwhelming consensus being that the US dollar is cooked over the coming decade. Personally, I'm bullish on crypto versus fiat and bullish on USD versus other fiat currencies. Ironically, I also believe that the adoption of crypto will be an accelerant for the USD's dominance, not a deterrence. I happen to agree with this. I mean, we've seen it. Think about people all around the world that can now buy some USDT or USDC, or even better, buy some UST and stake it for 20% yield on Anchor Protocol. This stuff is wild. Having a high interest savings account pegged to the dollar, that is absolutely crazy. It's a financial revolution for many parts of the world. So understanding how bullish this is and how little people actually have confidence in competing currencies like the yuan, it's really important to understand that fiat still plays a role and that the actual fiat currencies like the dollar are made more accessible and probably better by cryptocurrency. It's bullish for the dollar. So I don't see them going away, but I do see Bitcoin and other outside monies becoming incredibly valuable in their own way alongside the dollar, especially as geopolitical tensions and geopolitical formations shift. So the TLDR right now is that Bitcoin is finding a new narrative as an outside money, a hard money that's unconfiscatable and doesn't require trust in the US government. That this geopolitical tension has devalued the trust in the dollar to nations like Russia. And the reality is that that is a bull signal for Bitcoin. We also have changing Fed conditions, but they didn't change as fast as the stock market and crypto markets plunged. And so we are reverting back to that mean, that neutral. This means that we could experience some serious bullishness in the short term but we do have headwinds ahead. So short term, I wouldn't be surprised to see some nice bullish action here in crypto land, but we do have some seriously murky waters to cross in the future. The point here is that anything that's good for Bitcoin will elevate Ethereum and elevate the altcoins as they're all traded kind of in unison and the bigger Bitcoin gets, the bigger all of them will get. I don't see any world in which Bitcoin goes on a ripper and Ethereum and altcoins don't join in the party. That's just not gonna happen. The crypto ecosystem is too tethered to Bitcoin. So Bitcoin finding this new narrative is just very bullish for crypto in general and could lead to a more significant decoupling from the stock market. We haven't seen that yet. So I'm looking honestly to play these short-term periods of bullishness, bet on the market when people get way too sour and disgusted and toxic. I know when people are calling me names on Twitter just for having a bullish opinion that the market is way too oversold and it's time for a pump. Now here you can see me tweeting, when the market is overly bearish, it's usually time for a pump. And this is after I was referring to a tweet from the 8th of March when I'm saying everyone is calling for the same outcome, obliteration of risk assets. When has everyone been right? Hint, never. This is clearly the most likely outcome, but it feels too obvious to play out. And people are saying this is copium. People are saying this is hopium in the thread. And that's what you like to see is people that don't believe that there could be a bull scenario. And here we are March 8th when I started tweeting this. This was while Bitcoin was at 39K. And again, this is just something that you develop after years and years in crypto is when your spider senses go off and you go, people are just too bearish. People are just too bullish. You just start to feel the over-exaggeration of the market. And when it gets too far off to one direction, you can say, all right, well, maybe we need to come back to more of a neutral. That's what it's really about here is understanding that most people trade in extremes. They're either fully bullish or fully bearish. And the market is usually somewhere in the middle. So if you see people way too off on the extreme and you see everybody on one side of the extreme, it's never a bad decision to consider what the opposite situation might look like. 
Also, I wanted to take a second to talk about NFT land, where there's been an insane amount of strength in the blue chips, specifically Board Ape Yacht Club, which did their Ape Token airdrop, which was absolutely and utterly insane. And I'm so happy that I resisted all of the pushes from all of the people around me to sell my apes over 100 ETH, that I was collecting under one ETH and covering here on this channel. Really proud of my coverage of some of the blue chip NFTs throughout 2021. And I still believe what I said at the beginning of the NFT journey which is that most NFTs will be worth zero. However, there will be some blue chip collections, some diehard collector groups that just simply will not let the valuations of certain collections drop. We've seen that with Bored Apes, and I'm really excited to see what happens when these collections start getting combined with interesting tech. We see Bored Apes are launching their metaverse, and of course, if you've seen the video I put out yesterday, I just wanted to take a second and from the bottom of my heart thank each and every one of you. The amount of excitement and support and love on the Imposters full reveal video where I went through each and every segment of the Imposters project was something that warmed my heart on a level that I don't know if I've ever felt here in crypto land. I've never felt this embraced by the community for all the work that I've put in. And I just want to say thank you. Now, of course, if you guys are interested, I highly recommend you watch the video from yesterday where I go through everything about the Imposters project. It's a very significant video. There's also a giveaway running on it that you can still enter into. And if you want to join the Imposters Project. The Mint is beginning in just, I don't know when this video comes out. It might be beginning right as this video launches or a couple minutes before this video launches. It's really, really crazy in there. So I don't know if there'll be anything left over from the Mint, but I encourage you guys to check out that video because Imposters has been a labor of love for years now. And I would love to have this community be a part of that journey. The reality is that great NFTs with clear value props and strong communities are holding very, very well even through the turbulence. It's an incredibly impressive asset class, but only for the blue chip collections. So throughout 2022, let me be very clear. I'm going to be selling rallies on things that are more speculative, lower tier altcoins that I don't believe have the through line to keep growing throughout bearish markets. I'm also going to be continually dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin and Ethereum. I'm also going to be continue collecting NFTs in blue chip collections and ones that I think have a future in gaming. Again, gaming is still, in my opinion, the thing that rain or shine can bring more users to crypto. So I'm going to continue to walk my talk and invest in that sector. Again, this is just my strategy, but I do believe that if your time horizon is more than just a few days, you can still make it here in crypto land in 2022. There will be rallies. There will be bullish periods, just like we're seeing right now. But you need to understand that if you have some very speculative stuff doing incredible gains, two, five, 10 Xs, you should really be taking profits because a down move when the Fed changes their policies in a few months is not only likely, but it's probably guaranteed to a certain degree. So understanding that there will be a ton of volatility and that the people who dollar cost average into the good stuff, as well as manage their risk on the less good stuff, well, I think they're going to be in an amazing position once the market finds its footing and we clear fears of recession, we clear fears of a global conflict, we clear fears of the pandemic. I believe that the market will have, again, another honeymoon period either later in this year or sometime in the not too distant future. So your goal is to survive, and surviving means taking profits and managing risk on more speculative projects while dollar cost averaging into the long-term stuff that we know will survive any conditions. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I hope you're still enjoying your time here in crypto land. As always, my name's Elio Trades. You can find me on Twitter at Elio Trades. If you like the video, please like the video. Destroy that like button. Crush it. Obliterate it. Gently caress it. Whatever you need to do. It's a very easy way to show that you enjoyed the content, and it shows this video to more people around the world. As always, I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon on the next episode.